Hey everyone, uh, this video is not really in response to someone, but it is about them and in reference to some of the views they've expressed. I'm not going to state who it is in reference to, because this person is known um, to participate in false flagging campaigns, and quite frankly, I want to keep my channel. Um, Yes, so I mean that's kind of a, <laughs> uh, that suggests to you the sort of fascist sort of belief system this person is coming from, um, that he wishes to silence all opposing views. But I thought that um, a lot of the things that this person expressed in their videos, and if you're pagan and you've been following the whole sort of thing, with Blue Fire Witch and some other people, Tan House, with this person, you'll know who I'm talking about. If not, you don't need to know, or you can ask one of those people, or private message me and I'll let you know. Anyhow, I'll get on with it. Okay, so this person makes um, various uh, assertions, um, and I've, I've, I've heard these assertions before, which is why I've picked I've decided to um, refute them because I know it's not just this person who's making these assertions. So, first, the first thing I've just gone through and sort of point by point with all the major the major points, um, written them down. So, the first thing this person says is that they don't believe pagans have read the Bible. So, essentially, um, an atheist might get this as well. You know. Hey, if you don't agree, you obviously haven't really looked at the information, because if you did look at the information, you would agree. But for me, um, I, I've read the bubble, bi bubble. <laughs> I've read the bubble. I've read the Bible from cover to cover um, once, and twice more in large sections, plus just sort of referring back to it for research purposes. I'm quite familiar with the Bible. Uh, not as familiar as I used to be, because it's quite a few years now since I read it, but I used to be able to argue quite well in um, theological debates um, with Christians. Probably more effectively than they could, I often knew the Bible better than they did, which was really disappointing to me. Okay, but the Bible was actually what turned me away from Christianity. Um, uh... I actually, before I read the Bible, the reason I read the Bible was because I thought, you know, I'm ready to embrace this faith. I read the Bible and I was horrified and and just couldn't couldn't consider that anymore. Um, and if you want to know more about that aspect, um, you can watch my videos. Um, they're called From Hell to Avalon. And then he says, false gods, pagan gods. And I want to know what is, what are, what are Christians' objective criteria for claiming Yahweh as the one true God? Um, there are many creation stories throughout the world, and, and it seems to me that Christians have just picked one of them and are asserting that that is the only true story. Um, but... Um, you know, if it's just because they have an old holy book to refer to, there are older texts. There are Egyptian texts and Sumerian texts. Um, so why not choose them instead? That's basically my question. Um, pagan gods are devils. Well, see, what I want to know is, how do you identify a devil? Is it just a god, something that claims to be a god that is not Yahweh? That doesn't seem very, uh, you know, like, the, what proof do you have of that, other than the Bible says so? Um, now, and, and what proof do you have that Yahweh is not a devil? The Old Testament version of Yahweh, anyway. Um, because reading the Old Testament makes me believe otherwise. Um, I can't think of things more diabolical than what Yahweh either commands or supports in that book. Um, you know, for instance, you know, sanctioned rape, murder, and slavery. Um, 
He says that pagans turn ourselves over to fables. Now, Christian fables are no more verifiable than ours. Um, and there are no contemporary records of Jesus. I've looked for them because I, I did really believe that Jesus existed. I was very interested in the story of, of his life. But there are no contemporary records. And, you know, the Romans, it's been asserted various times that, and, and I believe this, the Romans were a very bureaucratic society. And if the story of Jesus is true, he created a huge stir. So there would have been records from that time um, talking about that. Um, but they don't exist. Um, there was a reference, I can't remember the guy's name, but there was a reference that was believed to be contemporary and then they found out that it was written a couple of hundred years later. So, And none of, the, none of the books of the Bible were written at the same time that Jesus was um, said to be walking the earth. Now, me saying this should not be taken as proof that Jesus did not exist or me asserting that there is proof that Jesus did not exist there is no such proof. Um, so, the, so there is no proof either that he did or that he didn't. And there is no proof that he rose from the dead and was either the son of God or an aspect of God. There is no proof of that. Just like there is no proof of any of my religious beliefs. And he says that Pagans don't want to be held accountable for their actions. And I've heard Christians say, that direct this to atheists as well, to anyone who's non-Christian, that the reason that we dispute the Bible or reject its teachings is because we just want to sin. We don't, we don't want to be held accountable for what we do. Now, I disagree. I think, I think that not holding a Christian worldview actually makes you feel more accountable for what you do. Um, and the reasons for this is um, there, there is no devil to blame. You can't blame anyone else for your negative actions. There is no forgiveness of sin. And from a pagan worldview, um, and from an atheist one as well, there, you know, there are repercussions for negative acts in this life, obviously. Um, Pagans might believe that this comes through different, uh, that you might get repercussions that don't directly stem from, like, you know, like you punch someone in the face and they turn around and punch you in the face back. That's like a direct repercussion. Um, pagans might sort of believe in a more sort of immediate karmic sort of view. And then also if you believe in reincarnation, that kind of stuff, you know, they believe it flows on into that. And some pagans believe that it comes back to you three times as bad as what you gave out. And he says, pagans want to be free. And yes, we do. All people should be free. Um, he misquotes the reed, the Wiccan reed. Um, now, I think this is either through ignorance or, or intent to misrepresent the Wiccan religion, um, and Wiccan readers not just do whatever you want. Um, the part of the read that he's referring to is these eight words the read fulfill, and it harm none, do what ye will. Now, I think that um, this is actually a more demanding code of ethics than Christianity. Um, and what I've written down here is one where harm to others is seen as measurable, valid, and something to avoid at all costs. Anything that does not cause harm is permissible. Many things that do not cause harm are prohibited in Christianity, and many harmful things are permitted. For example, slavery. Even Jesus does not speak against it in the New Testament. In Christianity, morally, morality is dictated to you. You can adhere to the Bible and rest assured. In paganism, we are all individually responsible for our own actions, and must measure the cost to others against our benefit when con contemplating an action. <sighs> so, and then following making that point, he then makes this complete... It's just amazing that something could come out of someone's mouth that is just so ridiculous. 
him. This is this is direct quotes. He says, False gods, the gods of the pagans, which are false. They don't even really exist. They are demons to tell you the truth. How can something not exist and also be a demon? Are you saying demons don't exist? It doesn't make any sense. And I've heard this before as well. They go, oh, you know, they're a false god. And they're a demon. So they don't exist and they're evil. It makes me think of, uh, there's this guy, a therapist called, um, very innovative therapist called Richard Bandler, who was the sort of uh, father of neuro-linguistic programming. And he talks in one of his videos, in one of his video-taped seminars, excuse me, 